second um, problem from chapter two, we're given a set of here functions. So the question's a little bit vague in the notes. It just says show that this is linearly independent. Gives you a little hint. It says use differentiation, which I will in a moment. We, we need perhaps to mentally contextualize it a bit so that this, this is a set of functions. So we might think, what's the vector space we're in? Well, we might take the space of all differentiable functions uh, so that we have some context for it. So, Think about vector space, the space of all differentiable functions, and I'm going to take this subset here, and I want to show that this subset is linearly independent. Now, when we see the words dependent and independent, you must always go back to the definition as to what it actually means. So, in order to check this is independent, we start out by trying to build the zero object. In fact, here it'll be the zero function from these three objects, from these three functions, and we show the only way of doing that is the trivial way, where all the scalars are zero. So our first step, consider lambda 1 times 1 plus lambda 2 times e to the x plus lambda 3 times e to the 2x. And I'm going to try and put that equal to zero. Again, you've got to think about what is the incarnation of zero in the setting. This is now the zero function. This is the function that is zero for all x. You can think of it graphically as the x-axis, if you will, but it's the function, not the number zero. So this has to be true for all x. And so we want to try and show that all the lambdas turn out to be zero. It gives us the hint. It says you do something involving differentiation. Well, probably before I do that, I might just put x as zero in. If this is true for all x, I might just whack x as zero in and see what that gives me. So that tells me that lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 3 is zero. So I'll hang on to that equation. That looks useful. Now I'm going to use the hint, and that is to take some derivatives. So I'm going to take the derivative, and then I'm going to put x is 0 in. So I'm just putting some little steps over the side here to summarise what I'm doing. Probably should write some English instead, but I'll just do that. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. So that differentiates to 0. This one differentiates exactly to itself, and put x is 0 in, I get lambda 2. This differentiates to 2 lambda 3 e to the 2x. You put x as 0, you get that. And that's got to be 0. When you differentiate the 0 function, you get the 0 function. And when you replace uh, x with 0 in the 0 function, you get 0. So think about what's going on there. Carefully about the mathematics. Well, that's looking good. I want to get one more equation out, so I might as well differentiate it again. So I'm going to now take the second derivative. And again, I'll put x as 0 in. So that twice disappears. That twice, put x as 0, you get lambda 2. This one twice, you'll get 4 lambda 3 is 0. And I'll call that equation 3. Well, now you should see that we're pretty well close to finished because if I now subtract equation 3 minus equation 2, then the lambda 2's cancel, so I'll get 2 lambda 3 is 0, so that wipes out lambda 3. If lambda 3 is 0, you can plug it back into equation 2. Now it tells me that lambda 2 is 0, and I can plug both of those back into equation 1, and that will give me that lambda 1 is 0. And so I try and build the 0 function from these three, my calculation here tells me the only way of doing that is they're all, all look at the uh, scalars are zero, so therefore S is linearly independent. You can use a similar kind of method, and there are similar questions there. They've got some trig functions. You can try doing that. Sometimes integrating uh, turns out to be a nice thing to do in, in um, proving sets like this are linearly independent various different methods and there are other examples in the problems for you to practice with.